Are you ready for some football? The new NFL regular season starts this week, so today let's talk about my approach to shooting football. Let's gear up and let's get started. Hey there everyone, I am Jerry Lai and welcome back to my sports photography channel. For those of you joining me for the very first time, I currently serve as the Director of Content and Photography at USA Today Sports, and I have been lucky enough to have been in the photojournalism industry for the past 17 years. My goal for the channel is to help you become a better sports photographer. If you think that I can help you out, hit the like button and subscribe. This video is going to be the latest installment in my series describing the best photo positions I have for specific sports. And with college football already underway and the NFL kicking off this weekend, it seems appropriate to talk about football. Now, before I can really get into this, I need to make a little note about gear. Longtime viewers of this channel know that I actually don't place a huge emphasis on having top of the line gear because I know that not everybody has the kind of money or access to that kind of equipment. So what I try to teach on my channel is good photography fundamentals and positioning so that you can extract the maximum out of the gear that you do have. Now this is particularly important in football because you're dealing with a field that is 120 yards long. If you are out of position or in a spot where the action is moving away from you, you have almost no chance of getting the shot. Or if you do manage to get the shot, you're probably so far away that it's basically useless. So a good rule of thumb for every photo position that I talk about in this video is you should place yourself 10 yards away from the action for every 100 millimeters of focal length that you have. So for example, if the longest lens you have is a 70 to 200, then you should try to keep the action to within 20 yards of the line of scrimmage or where you hope the play will end up. However, let's say you have a 300 millimeter lens, you can place yourself up to 30 yards away. So now that I got that quick little tidbit about focal length out of the way, let's talk about the best positions for shooting football. Here's a diagram of a standard American football field. Like I said, it is 120 yards long, and it's very easy to figure out how far you are from the action because the distances are very clearly marked on the field. Generally, photographers have free range of the entire perimeter, but in certain levels of sport, the bench areas are off limits. So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna say that the areas between the 30 yard lines are where the benches are and are indeed off limits. But as you can see, that still leaves a huge amount of space for photographers to choose from. So where to begin? Well, immediately after the opening kick, I typically position myself on the sideline around the 20 yard line. This position actually is not the greatest spot to shoot football from because it only gives you a very narrow view of the field of play. So if that's the case, why do I go here? It's because this position gives me the best chance of checking off the number one must have from every football game. And that is the classic quarterback drop back photo. No matter who you shoot for, I guarantee this will be on your shot list whether it's for a team, a card company, a newspaper, you name it. You gotta have it. You wouldn't believe how many games I've worked as a photo editor where I actually have to ask the photographer at halftime or post game, hey man, where is your quarterback dropping back photo? Uh, I don't have one is not an appropriate response. So please don't be that person. In that first possession of the game, get that classic drop back photo. Yes, they are not super interesting, but they are a daily must have. Anyways, every once in a while, you will get lucky and it will yield some good action. You could get a great blindside sack. And you could sometimes from this spot, get the running back handoff or the running back coming straight at you. But the most important thing is to check that quarterback drop back photo. Once you have that box ticked off, you can move on to a better spot of the field to capture football action. So what I normally do here, especially once the offense crosses the 50 yard line, I'll plant myself downfield in the direction that the offense is moving. 
Where exactly you position yourself, again, will depend on what kind of range you have in your lenses. Remember, you have about 10 yards of reach for every 100 millimeters of focal length. So if you have a 7200 and the offense is at midfield, the 30 yard line is about as far as you'd want to be. But if you've got a 400, you can be at the goal line or even in the back of the end zone. No matter where exactly you are downfield of the line of scrimmage, these are great spots to capture the offense in action. If the running back breaks through the line or if it's a sweep out wide, you'll have a great shot of them coming right at you. It's also great for capturing wide receiver action as they catch passes or battle with defensive backs for the ball. Finally, placing yourself ahead of the offense like this can be good for additional looks of the quarterback. However, this view is not as reliably clean or unobstructed because the offensive linemen often get in the way and clutter the photo. Now what happens when the offense enters the red zone or inside the 20? What is the best position to place yourself to capture a potential touchdown? Well, my favorite spot for this is in the corners behind the goal line, generally within five yards of the back pylon. Obviously, when you're trying to tell the story of the game, you want to see players crossing the goal line and celebrating their touchdowns. This can be achieved from most spots along the end zone, but you do want to avoid getting too close to the middle of the field. And there are two reasons for this. First off, if you are too close to the middle of the field, the field goal post is going to block your vision of the back rear pylon. So any action that goes that way, you're totally screwed for. The second reason why you want to be close to the corners of the end zone is that it sets you up for one of the most dynamic photos that you could get in football photography, the pylon dive. I mean, how cool are these? So that is how you capture football action on offense. But what about the defense? We can't forget about the D. Depending on who you are shooting for and your goals for the game, you may want to actually position yourself behind the play. For example, if you shoot for a team, you're going to want to get their defense coming right at you. Or another example is if you're a newspaper photographer and have to tell the story of a game, if one team is up several scores on another, you know that their defense will be really, really ratcheted up. So in this case, it's good to be behind the play. Ideally, I'll place myself in the end zone behind the offense because in this case, it gives me the chance to get the rare opportunity to capture a defensive touchdown. This is truly a fantastic photo to get if you're photographing for a team or trying to illustrate the story of a game because it is not super common to get. Just remember that the same rule of focal length versus range applies. Try to keep the action 10 yards away for every 100 millimeters of focal length that you have. So actually, that's about all there is when it comes to positioning when capturing football action. Keep in mind though, there is a lot of fanfare that goes on at a football game that you'll probably want to shoot as well. No matter who you're shooting for, you're going to also want to be capturing the fans, introductions, atmosphere surrounding the game, traditions, coaching staff, and any other things that might be specific to your market. Don't neglect these other things around the periphery so that you have a very complete set that you could show your clients and your editors. Anyways, that will do it for me today. If you enjoyed the content of this video, as always, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribed. Let me know in the comments section down below what your favorite areas of the field are to position yourself at an American football game. I'd be curious to know. Thank you all for watching as always. I will see you all again in a couple of weeks with a great new video. Take care, stay safe, happy shooting, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.